always topical, never relevant. This is the Cardboard News Network. Kit, 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 move! 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 Welcome to the Cardboard News Network. I'm Chas Redhead. And I'm Luke Rollison, the best boy on the news. And here are the headlines. A study says one in ten Britons cannot identify a cabbage. Fortunately, cabbages commit very few crimes. Zoom founder Eric Yuan has transferred six billion dollars worth of shares. At least, that's what we think he said. His screen froze and he forgot to unmute. The police have caught ghost hunters breaking lockdown rules. They warned Scooby-Doo he can no longer rip off people's masks. Piers Morgan has left Good Morning Britain. While he'll no longer present ITV's flagship morning show, fans can look forward to his appearance on the next series of The Masked Singer as The Angry Potato. Oxford University is seeking citizen scientists to study polar bears from the comfort of their own sofa. Ideal applicants live in the Arctic and have a really big window. Cyprus's national broadcaster have hit back against accusations that their Eurovision entry promotes devil worship. The broadcaster went on to say, Neil Arthotep is not a devil. He's an eldritch being. Servant of Azathoth. The idiot god. The size of a galaxy, he slumbers thousands of light years away. That is until the day his grandson Cthulhu awakens once more to cover the world in death and madness. So totally different. And those are the headlines. Thank oh. you very much, oh. newspapers. Yes, and we should say that there is a language warning on this broadcast. Yes, yes, there's going to be language in this show. You better be ready for it. All sorts of different languages. No, nope, that's not what it means. I'm going to fit a few in. No, uh, what well that Try means... Try and count them, YouTube. What well that means is if you put a film rating on it, I'd say give it a 15 or a 12A if you're a cool parent. And we're the cool parents of this stream. Um, and here we are in our very own home-built cardboard studio. That's right. We are not doing this online anymore. So we are here they all are in the online. same room together. Well, yes, that makes sense. But we are now here in a studio to give you a sense of professionalism, the likes of which you've ne never seen before. Get away. And we're joined in the studio by our favorite little lost dog. It's not a model airplane kit. It's a Kit Sullivan. Hey, there Kit. Is. Hey, guys. How you doing? It's nice to have you here. Usually, Kit's our roving reporter, and it's nice to all be in the same room together. Well, I've been asked to come in today because you guys are obviously working very hard during the show, and it's my job to keep your energy up. And I've created a device just to do that. So, Luke, if you could just open your mouth for me. What is this? All right, Kit, but I hope it's not going to be disruptive for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yum! Chaz, do you want to try it? No, no, that looks very painful. Chaz, really Chaz, 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 I'm really not interested in Chaz, you need I'm not anything. interested in the... Otherwise we have a sugar load, Chaz. We don't want that. We want to keep the show nice and light, like a Malteser. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Shall I just do my charts? Do your charts, right, Chaz. Fine. Well, I am something of a statistician, the official statistician of the Cardboard News Network. And uh, I do have some charts for you. This is our first chart. And for those of you who are new to the Cardboard News Network, I do have a percentage breakdown of what to expect from tonight's broadcast. As you can see, we are 32% cardboard. More details on the amount of cardboard later. 26% general idiocy. 9% uh, VTs. We're going to be throwing to a lot of VTs. Don't be alarmed. 14% uh, uh, me being angry. Uh, that's a bit of a spoiler for the general content ahead. 13% Luke's dumb face misses out on my anger level by 1%. And 6% actual news. Now, some of you may be concerned about how much cardboard we used. We have a very scientific breakdown of the exact number of cardboard used. There it is. That's the exact number of cardboard that we used. On to the next chart. Ah, yes. Now... I mentioned in the headlines that Piers Morgan has left Good Morning Britain and we do have a breakdown of future professions he might take based on their favourability amongst the public. As you can see, journalist, going back to his career in journalism, uh, you can see mostly unfavourable, uh, some favourabilities there, but then again, some people still read The Sun. Uh, as a talent judge, he was a judge on many reality TV programs, still unfavourable. Uh, very favourable is Antarctic research, sending him away 
to a Antarctic research station. Maybe the one from John Carpenter's The Thing. Who knows? Overall favourable. The least favourable, the most unfavourable, in fact, is uh, him taking a role in everyone's nightmares. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants a Piers Morgan nightmare. And with a whopping 100% favourable, just sodding off. So that's what I would recommend. Just sodding off, Piers Morgan. All right, moving on. Uh, we've been in lockdown for a while now, and I'm approaching my second birthday in lockdown. My birthday is in April. Two and as you could old. What? Two years old. <laughs> no, I'm not two years old. Second Luke. birthday. No, it's, it's the, yeah, everyone has the same. No, mind. Uh, so this is my birthdays in lockdown based against my grasp on reality. And as you can see here, as my birthdays in lockdown have increased, my grasp on reality has sort of bounced in various things. You can see it peaks here. Um, and then I realize I'm going to have a second lockdown birthday and it immediately collapses. But on the plus side, my FOMO has been declining at a very steady rate. So, you know, silver lining somewhere. Uh, this is interesting. We are, of course, in 2021 and people have made New Year's resolutions. And these are all of the resolutions that have already been broken, uh, which and they have been broken down into uh, types of New Year's resolution broken. 36% food-based New Year's resolutions. Couldn't resist having those waffles covered in crumbled Oreos. I get it. 30% uh, sleep. You're not getting enough sleep as you should do. Or maybe you're getting too much. Who knows? 11% uh, exercise. You said you were going to go on a run more, but not being allowed to go out that much, it's a perfect excuse. Also 11% smoking. You said you were going to stop smoking, but your existential crises have continued at a pace. I understand. 8% um, screen time. Can't stop looking at your phones or tablets. And 2% dick. You said you weren't going to have any bad dick. Why are you throwing your life away for bad dick? You know it's not worth it. Sort it out. And finally, uh, we have a Venn diagram. I'm quite partial to Venn diagrams myself. So uh, as you can see on this Venn diagram, in blue, it's complete assholes, And in yellow, it's people who have hashtag be kind in their Twitter bios. And that's a lovely Venn diagram of that. And that's all for my charts this week. Luke, over to you. Thanks very much, Chaz. And a very happy second birthday for you. Not how it works. Big old age, Chaz. I look forward to driving. Wink. Anyway, who's this little furry friend in my hand? Well, some of you might recognize Cardboard News Network's very own Toto the Hamster, our correspondent. But he's been very busy also working for the government, who have been in all over the news very recently, hogging the front pages like they're Brad and Angelina, but no longer, because we're going to tell what's really going on behind the doors. Chaz, name a date. Uh, April the 8th. That took a long time considering we pre-prepared. April the 8th, Chaz. April the 8th. Well, the government is making all kinds of changes to what can and can't be done. But how do they make such tricky decisions? Very simple. They use a swingometer just like this one. So April the 8th was our date, Chaz. Yep. And what we're going to do is we're going to swing Toto the hamster at the swingometer. I've given him a couple of sharp little um, vaccinating jabby needles. Luke, and this sounds very unsafe. Um, it's, it's very um, happening in a moment, is what I would say, Chaz. Mm -hmm. And you're going to watch it happen. Yep. And I'm going to wear these safety designer specs. Thank you. I'm going to swing little Toto and we're going to find out what is going to happen. We're going to find out what is going to happen on April the 8th. Uh, Georgie, you're signaling to me. What is it you're going to say? Yeah, the wires caught around it. There we go. Oh, there we go. Safety is the second thing that will happen. Here goes, Chaz. April the 8th. Let's find out. Here goes, Toto! All right, so it's a swing and a miss there yeah, in many yeah, ways. Yeah, sort of building up momentum. And I'm gonna... Are you scared to grab him because he's full of sharp objects? Yeah, full <laughs> of sharp little objects, this guy. One for the kiddies. Here you go. Whoa! Oh! Wait, that's one, that's pet. So pet? Chaz, look up what that means. And I we'll, will. We'll find out in a moment. And uh, we're gonna combine that with... Oh, whoa! <laughs> nice little duck from old Lukey boy there. Come on, Toto. This is Don't real high-wire stuff, Luke. We're not in Kansas anymore! Think! Think. So we've got Think and Pet Chaz. What does that mean for April the 8th? Uh, well, so, so what that means is on April the 8th, 
Um, you can't, you, you can't, can't shake hands with a pet. You can't shake hands with you a pet? You still can't shake hands with a pet on April the 8th, but you can think about your friends, but only if you're thinking about them outdoors. So you can think about your friends when they're outdoors, but don't shake hands with your little doggy. You don't know where he's been. Yeah. Let's give me another date, Chaz. What about your birthday? My birthday is April the 8th. Oh, okay. Give me another date, Chaz. Uh, September 2nd. All right, September the 2nd. Let's find out, Toto. Let's see. Oh, pork pie. Pork pie is number one. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's give him a, I want to get him to sled. Let's go on, sled. Hit sled. Hit sled. All right, I'm going to give him a bit of a boost if I can. You need to give him a boost, mate. Oh, a letter. Letter. We've got uh, pork pie and letter. Okay, well, well, that means on September the 2nd, you can eat a pork pie outdoors. Not indoors, outdoors. And, and uh, you can share a sexually charged letter. Oh, that, makes a, that makes a lot of sense to me, Chaz. Are there any other ones that we've missed that we particularly want to wanna, wanna hear about? What's mouth stuff, Chaz? Uh, oh, that's just you can do mouth stuff. Informative and delicious. All right, Chaz, I'm going to give Toto a little bit of a break because if you ask me, he's earned it. See you later, Toto. Back to you, Chaz. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> Always a pleasure to see Toto. Such charisma and so very dangerous. Well, it's time to throw away to one of our incredible Cardboard News Network's correspondents. In fact, here's an exclusive report from science correspondent Eddie Hurst. Science! Hello, it's me, Professor B. Brainy Boy, here to show off the latest in Talk Boy technology. The Talkman Pro 100 now contains Voices of the Pastomizer 2.0. We've now been able to harness that technology to get all sorts of figures from the past to hear what they'd sound like in the flesh. Joan of Arc. <coughs> Ramses 2, getting Rammy with it. <coughs> Henry VIII. And Winston Churchill. <laughs> Truly, a unique insight into some of history's most elusive figures that otherwise we would have no means of finding out how or ever they sounded. Well, thank you very much, Eddie. Luke. How would you rank celebrity voices? Uh, uh num numerically, I reckon. I'd I'd, I'd rank them using numbers one to five. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone understands numbers, so one would be the best one. Uh, I wouldn't rank them, for example, by military, like private, sergeant, colonel. Mm. That I would use numbers. No, oh, well, you're speaking a lot of sense. Uh, we've got a lot of wonderful viewers joining us for this uh, exclusive broadcast from the Cardboard Studio. Uh, a big hello to Tom Curzon, Sarah Cameron, Charlie Miller, DVD Smith, Richard Bald. Uh, Bucks, Frankie Thompson, so many wonderful people joining us for this broadcast, and it's a pleasure to have you here. Including my girlfriend. You have really had to mention it, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. All right. Well, <laughs> well, Luke, did you know that apparently, according to the government, we're coming out of lockdown very gradually? I didn't see it on the swing arm at Chaz. I'll believe it when I've swung a hamster at it. Well, <laughs> Not a second before. Well, things are starting to open up very gradually. Here with more is CNN General Outdoors correspondent, Cheryl Freeties. Hello, my name is Cheryl Three Ties and today I am going to be talking to those affected by music festivals opening up again. Did anyone see this article? Read it. Fans and musicians should have proof of vaccine to attend festivals, says organisers. So my report's on that. <laughs> Most of us have spent the year at home, right? But musical festivals and now music festivals are now reopening with tickets going on sale. But organisers say you will need a vaccine passport to Okay, okay. To go to I've got events. my four ties. I wanted to talk to some of the festival workers to see what they thought about it. So today I'm going to be speaking to Lou. Lou is a portal and he has been sitting empty for almost a year now. I wanted to hear what Lou had to say 
about the opening of the festivals and to see what he thought about the opening of the festivals. So I'm going to be chatting to him about opening the festivals now. Hello, my name's Lou, I'm Portaloo. Um, I've been at Portaloo for, what, oh, 20 years now? Must be 20 years. Um, not been easy, but um, it's just great. I just love the people you meet, really, the people you get to know. Lou, how are you feeling about the festivals opening? Of the opening of yeah, the festivals? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had a year to myself and I. Uh, been absolutely fantastic, if I'm honest. Um, absolute dream. Um, yeah, we managed to get away. We got away to Turkey. Um, absolutely beautiful there, actually. I know a couple of airplane toilets, got some cheap flights, fantastic. You've been sitting vacant for a year. How's it been and how do you feel about them opening up the festival again? Yeah, vacant at the moment, vacant at the moment, but soon to be occupied. Soon to be occupied, as I like, I call, no, I call it occupied. Um, I don't say occupied, I say occupied. Yeah, yeah, something fishy going on here. It must have been a tricky year for you lot, not being open and all. Well, how have you spent your time? Whilst it's not when whilst the festival's not been opening, what do you feel about the festivals coming back this summer? Um, I've had all sorts in this. I've had all sorts in my loop. I've had um, golden stones. Yeah, each of them one by one, drop something off. I've had uh, Lulu. Um, we had a laugh. Yeah, we did have a laugh. Yeah, you go to Lulu, Lulu. Yeah, that went on for hours. Uh, Elton John, the old rocket man himself, who stuck a rocket out there. That's for sure. Uh, Bowie. I had him, um, he was fantastic, very nice man, very, very nice man. Um, who else am I adding in? You don't seem to be answering any of my questions directly, but I'm just wondering how you're feeling about them. You're getting your job back with the festivals because you'll be at the festivals because you're a loo. How do you feel about them being used again? Yeah, I've had, um, who else am I adding in? I've had a couple of actors, I had Jon Snow. News reporter. Uh, don't know what he was doing, think he was doing proper news reporter he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just getting a bit frustrating now because you're not answering any of my questions about the festival's reopening and that's like what the news report that I found was all about and I'm supposed to be doing the news and I'm quite new to this and even though my personality trait is that I'm a bit nervous, it'd be really good to get this right um, and to actually provide some like, news information. <laughs> um, I had that one that was married to, what's his name? Blonde uh, Had a couple of kids with him. Um, oh, I've forgotten her name now. Gone out, they've gone, gone out. The, uh, just really frustrating because I really wanted to do a really good job. And you know, people laugh at me in the office because I wear three ties, but it's like a, just a little bit frustrating because actually like, I am a serious news reporter and um, I really wanted to sort of move into the entertainment bit, you know, the section on entertainment music and stuff because I really love music, I'm on the Spotify all the time and actually you just can't reply to me so it's just really frustrating. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been That's been me, three ties. The CNN News. And Cheryl Three Ties joins us now. Cheryl, how are you? I'm absolutely fine. I wanted to actually announce to you all that I'm actually Cheryl Four Ties now. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Cheryl Four Ties joining us now live on the line. Uh, Cheryl, um, I feel like that interview really got away from you. Absolutely. And um, it got to the point where I actually had to kill Lou. Um, hence me having his sign here vacant and uh, I had to destroy it. I had to set fire to him. Right, so you've kept the sign as some sort of uh, grim trophy of your kill. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I, I, I was, it, was a bit, it was a bit upsetting, to be honest. But to be honest, he didn't give me any of the information I needed. Hmm. And it's more important to me that I'm a valued reporter to you hmm. than it is, you know him being there so it's him, slightly a dark it's, turn it's it, taken but it, yeah it, it's more important that you work here than than lou is being alive 
Absolutely, right. absolutely. And Lou did actually offer to get engaged to me. Right. Um, and I said I wasn't interested because he could never give me a straight answer. So that yeah. is true. That is true. It definitely seemed to uh, to to dodge the question. Did, did, did you think Lou had something to hide? Absolutely. There was definitely some sort of conspiracy going on there. I'm not sure if it was a sort of an anti-vac thing, a sort of a 5G thing, a mm. sort of, I'm not sure. But he certainly had some secrets, um, especially with some of his celebrity friends. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Knows too much, eh? <laughs> you might think. Yes, I think his nose was full, if you know what I mean. Oh, very much so, very much so. Um, uh, Cheryl, I know your time is valuable, so I just want to ask you one more quick thing. Um, obviously, uh, obviously, the purpose of the report was talking about festival seasons reopening again. Um, is there any sort... I don't want them! I don't want just them! One, just one, just one. I don't want them! Just try it. No, get, get, get off. Oh. Um... Obviously, festival season uh, is reopening again, and that's something you clearly uh, care quite a lot about. Um, is there a particular festival of, of choice for you? Is there um, a particular festival, a, a particular tent or act that uh, you can't wait to get back to? Well, I'm a big Creamfields fan. I'm off for getting absolutely off my nut and just getting in a field, taking my four ties off and literally throwing them in the air. Oh, so then you'd be Cheryl No Ties. Cheryl, Cheryl no ties at Creamfields, they call me. Cheryl no ties at Creamfields. That's the full nickname. Yes. Incredible. Well, Cheryl, another slam dunk of a report. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me and I hope you like me. I do. I like you very much, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Enjoy your more teasers. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. What a nice clock you have on, Chaz. What? I bet you must always never be late. Good. Well, we're not going to be late for our next report, which is from a sports person and also a celebrity person. Two of the best people you could find in the world. I'm going to chat to them on my Bluetooth headset. Oh, Bluetooth Jesus. headset. Zoom in. Zoom in, Georgia. Get a good shot of that. Bluetooth headset, Georgia. Get a good, a good old shot of, of that, of that, of that gold. This Perched. is not the gold you think it is, and you know it. And we're going to speak to Ella the Great and Adam Lata. Take it away. see what some of the celebrities are wearing to this evening's award ceremony. Oh, wow. It's um, everyone's celeb favourite, Scylla Black, and she's wearing peas. I just like the peas on my face. I feel that no more questions, no more questions. And who's that? It's celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay, and he's wearing a stapler. You look great, Gordon. Oh, well. And it's none other than musician John Lennon, who's wearing he's wearing planets for, instead of glasses. All I'm saying is, give planets a chance. Thank you so much, Ella and Adam. And speaking of celebrity, there has been a new celebrity entry into the fashion world. I'm, of course, speaking of the most obvious celebrity to move into uh, their own clothing line, um, director, actor, documentarian, Werner Herzog. And I believe we can cut over to an exclusive presentation of his new spring collection. Yes, hello. This is my collection. As you can see, people often compliment people by calling them square. And here is a square with a small dog on a leash. Are they truly controlling anything? And now, here is a sad boy, forever trapped in an existence of people coming up to him and saying, hey, 
Don't I recognize you from the front of toilet doors? Yes, he says with a heavy breath. That is me. And finally, a cheese grater made enormous. For what is more grating than the nature of existence itself? Endlessly circling the planets, signifying nothing. Wow. Well, uh, that was a uh, pretty intense business. Oh, hey, Luke. Hey. Wow. All right, let's get back to it, I reckon. Were those tearaway cardboard trousers? Chaz, I don't think I've got enough money and I want more of it. How can we change that right now? Well, Luke, with that four out of 10 segue, I can tell you that we can learn how to turn our ways around, financially speaking, with this exclusive report from CNN's stock market correspondent, Ellie B.W. Ellie? Money, 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 money. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Ellie B.W. Your main line into the stock market. We will go on today. I'm telling you where to buy, where to sell, which companies are on the up, which companies are on the down, opening up your portfolio and closing down the competition. I've got the shitty of the bear market, the otter market, very good, the bull market and Camden market. As we say in the CNN stock dog, we're not making friends, we're making money. We're making honey, we're milking bees. Big buzzin bucks, people. Come on. DJ, 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 DJ. DJ. I'm gonna give you my predictions hot and fresh out of my mouth for this year of our Lord, 2021. We're reopening people, finally. The largest reopening in reopening history. It's like the Roaring Twenties again, but we're in colour. It's like the post-World War II boom, but we're in colour. It's like the 2011 Oscar-winning film, The Artist, but we're in colour. The money train is speeding into Cash Money Station at high speeds and surplus stacks are flying out the windows. But how do you board a train? How do we jump onto a train that is moving so fast that extra coins and, and cards and notes are flying out, banging you in the eyes and you can't see what to invest anymore? Well, I'm going to help you. Grab the money job by its money balls and breed, breed, breed. Open your ears, my players, because I'm about to tell you where to invest your dimes. Okay. Tell me what it means. Now, you're going to want to find your Woolworths. Grab you a couple of handfuls of fizzy cola bottles, slap them in your mouth. Go down to the local Virgin Mega stores and grab yourself a CD. Go to the bloody blockbuster and pick up a vid vid, yeah? For you and the fam, huh? Eh? Take a while, buy a BHS and pick up Nonna Ragardi. Invest in Comet, Borders, Maplin, the McRib and Toys R Us. <laughs> buy now, invest and come out on top. Now we've got your portfolio wide open. We're going to want to expand your currency. I'm talking about Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Big Chongas coin, yeah? But let me chat about cardboard coin. This single use, reusable, recyclable, washable coin is the latest discrete trend. Take it from me, regular currency is no good anymore because they keep printing it. They're farming it, they're kneading it, they're proofing it, and they're great British baking it, yeah? This currency will help me personally and also help you. I've got five of these coins. So them for £10 each, that's £50 to a big investor. <laughs> ring, ring. Okay, this coming straight in from my source on the source floor of the mansion in the hotel in the stock market town. Hot fresh and um, tips. So I want you to quantity ease those needs and make sure to sell. Sell, sell, this is not a drill. <sighs> oh, I feel dizzy. And our stock market correspondent joins us now. Stock dog, I want to give you a bone and a small kennel to sleep in. Because... Rephrase that, Thank rephrase you. that immediately. <laughs> oh my God, no! Yeah. <laughs> stock dog, I'd like to give you a squeaky toy. Thank you. <laughs> I resign, bye guys, see you later. No, you can't resign I'm in the middle resigning. of the show. Um, uh, uh, Stock Dog, um, we have a lot of questions from our chat that I will get to for financial advice. But the first question I have to ask is, 
Um, how did any of that make sense? Uh, if you don't understand, you're beyond hope, really. Right. Yeah, okay. Chaz, look at me. I, I just invested and look, I, what, five minutes and you, I'm rich. Wait, you invested in cardboard um, coin? Cardboard coin. Look at it. I got D it. Don't invest in cardboard coin. The now, GSM. That doesn't, sound, the that GSM. doesn't sound like a real thing, though, does the it? Uh, it Chaz? is real, mate. I've got one of them right here. Feel that's that. the legit real. thing in the Feel video. That. Yeah, that's a, that's a real, Feel that. real. You don't have to keep giving them what to me. What are things that you believe in? Maths? Can't touch it. Cardboard coin? You can flay it! Do that! Get Breaking off me! It, rain it. Beautiful. So Thank distracting. You. Um, Little so, pancakes. <laughs> so let's move on to some questions from our chat. Uh, uh, Stock dog, maybe you can offer some financial advice. Um, question from DVD Smith: um, Is bear cocaine a good investment for 2021? Cocaine is ter is a ter terrible terrible thing. So no 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 cocaine, no bears, no human. Don't invest. Don't invest. That's it. You heard it here first. Heard it here first. We have a question from uh, Shari, uh, which is, how do bear and bull markets get along? They don't. Not at all. Not, no, not even slightly? Oh, come no. on. Surely now and then. It's a real Hatfield and McCoy you, situation. I'm telling you, you listen to me, yeah? They don't get on. Don't fucking in <laughs> invest. Yeah, don't invest. I don't wouldn't invest. worry about swearing. I wouldn't worry. What I said. Yeah, I'll blend right we in. We have to burn this whole thing. Um, uh, um, we have a question from Charlie in the chat, which is, is now a good time to invest in NFTs? I don't know what that means. Okay, good, because neither did I. Farmers, terrific! You're just saying words at this point. Siblings Comedy said, I can't breathe. What can we do about that? That's not a question. Get, get, get a ventilator, invest. Invest. Buy small, buy large, and sell your family a scooter. Yeah. Get out of here. All right, see you later. Um, stock dog. Um, I I assume what you've said makes sense. So we'll just have yeah, to yeah. take that on 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 faith. Um, I hope you have a, a a very pleasant evening and thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And <laughs> now, uh, and now it's over to the weather with Luke. Thanks, Chaz. Wow, the weather everywhere, deadly. Invisible, and yet so, so predictable. <laughs> if I ever look up at the sky again and think, I know what you're going to do, send me pennies from heaven. But let me tell you how you can predict the weather, and hopefully avoid it. Now, here is the map of Great Britain. Ever since we picked it as our favourite of the Britons, we've called it great. And surely it is solid, dependable. The same, hot, warm and sunny. But I've got some bad news for you guys, because soon you're not going to be feeling that way. You're going to be feeling like you've been rained on, because that's exactly, Pull up, what's, gonna, that's exactly what's gonna happen. There's, there's gonna be rain, mostly from Scotland, I would say. Mostly from Scotland, the rain. Um, and if you want a nice drink, you can have it. Uh, 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 yeah, if you want, if you want a, a nice drink, you can have it. But if you don't want a nice drink, head on down to your local pub. Now, what else might there be? Well, these are all symptoms of something quite scary and quite terrifying. You know it as the beast from the east. And here it comes, revealing its teeth from Cornwall to London, severing our fair isle in twain. Nothing will ever look like it was before. It's bad news and one can only hope that a champion of the realm will come and stop it and say good night, you bad beast before the winds come. Oh, when the winds come, there will be snow. It's terrible snow. <laughs> Blowing away. Oh, no. Here he goes. Luke's being yeah. blown away. He's been blown away. Quickly, cut to traffic. Car Crash City, Car Crash City. Welcome to Car Crash City with me, Steve Car Crash. It's Steve Car Crash. Ah, fuck off. <laughs> Lunchtime. You know what it takes to make a great breakfast. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Up your ass. Hey, let's turn that shit up. Hey! Oh my god! 
here comes now. That was a close shave. What's happening? Something's lifting me off. See you later, guys. I'm going up. Ah, well. Thank you, Car Crash Steve. Luke, it's amazing how many wonderful correspondents we have, isn't it? It's extraordinary what you can do if you just text all your family members and say, send me a video about the news. <laughs> You'll get some really funny stuff on that old WhatsApp. Are you drunk on Maltesers again? They're great. And I, my blood sugar is right up tip top. Thanks, Kit Sullivan. I... Mm. You just said the catchphrase for... <laughs> for Frosty. <laughs> Thanks, Kit Sullivan. <laughs> That's all right. Well, look, we, we've actually become something of a big deal recently. I don't believe it, Jazz. It's true. I had paparazzis. No waysies. Well, a paparazzi singular, paparazzo. You had a paparazzo? I had a paparazzo, <laughs> I did. <laughs> And, All right. And I've read so and so, if you ask me. Well, that's, <laughs> well, uh, I've got some of the pictures that the paparazzi took of me. Um, oh, if yeah? you if you care to look at that, you can uh, you can see that's me uh, outside my home. What's crazy is they numbered them on the back. I can't believe that. <laughs> that, that is that is. Whoa! What a nice house you have, Chaz. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just trying to have a phone call, you know, because I'm a big important man. You were who are you talking to, Chaz? I was talking to my mother. Oh yeah. So uh, I was I was having that, and and that's fine. It's a little bit of an invasion of privacy, but they clearly caught me in a private moment in this one, mm. which is. Listen, I'm just a man trying to have a trying to have a snack. A snack of a four-pointer of milk. Whole milk for a whole man. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I said. And, and, and like, clearly it was a private moment. You could clearly see I'm going through some stuff. That's... It's an invasion of privacy, and I don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, you were just getting rid of your nits. They shouldn't have been, <laughs> they shouldn't have been fussing with you. Well, of course, you're nonchalant about it. Your paparazzi photos are great. What? Not like this. No, that's not true, Oh, Chaz. really? This is the latest paparazzi photo of you. It's embarrassing, Chaz. This is the latest don't. one. Don't, don't hold it up like that, Chaz. This don't. is like, this is a glamour shot. It's not a glamour it's shot, It's a glamour Chaz. shot. The hair's nothing like it should look like, you know? It's, it's, it's all over. The look at this! Look at that! I think it's been photoshopped to make you look even more handsome. This is like not even my favorite of my photos on the uh, web page of my agent, Camilla Cole at Curtis Brown. That's Camilla Cole at Curtis Brown .co .uk you if just you want to get to in contact. It, didn't you? It's not even that good a photo, Chaz. It's not that good a photo. I'm currently seeking representation, by the way. What's next, Luke? I've got some paparazzi yellers. I've got loads of them. Paparazzinas. Oh yeah. What's next? I'm gonna tell you what's next with my mouth because that's how we do things here. Chaz. What's oh, your I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> what's your favorite edible treat? Edible treat? Edible treat. Dessert waffles. Oh yeah, open wide. Because they were made by farmers, just like everything that you and I eat on God's green earth and some other bits in the blue, blue sea. <laughs> <laughs> now, we are going to find out some news that's happening in agriculture. And for that, we're going to listen to Chris Sav and the lovely boys. Play it away, Sam! Yes, this is a serious issue. Uh, one in ten people in Britain can't identify a cabbage and are indeed incapable of naming other vegetables. Uh, a new study has found that when presented with a Brussels sprout, participants actually thought it was a cabbage and started to worry that they'd grown into giants. And let us not forget the impact on the financial sector, with several people being missold PPI because they thought they were taking out insurance on broad beans. So, a lot to mull over there. Thank you. In the fields surrounding West Gaul, an agricultural finding comes from quite an unlikely source. This is the story of one man and his lemon baby. Born from a lemon tree, born from a lemon tree, child is born from the sea. Oh, I couldn't be happier with me little lemon lad. I love you, Dad. Oh, he's fantastic. He really is. He's given me a sense of purpose. <laughs> he's witty. <laughs> Oh, and he can predict agricultural trends. And predict! <laughs> Cashewnuts for all! Child is born from the sea. Thank you. If you could remember one thing from this evening, it'd be Cashewnuts for all.
shop. We've just received breaking news during those two incomprehensible VTs. It seems a burglar has been apprehended uh, for a most strange reason as they tried to, what else, burgle a local residence. We now go live to the scene of the crime. They call me the burglar Because burglaring is what I freaking do Going into houses and taking your things Makes me feel like I'm a bloody king But sneaking around while you get your 40 winks Is when I discovered I had a sexy kink It's come to me later in life I feel like early me has been sexually deprived All around your house I creep To find out where you sleep Cause all I want to know is Where do you keep your feet? Oh, oh, oh Where do you keep your feet? Yeah why can't a burglar get off on showing a stranger's feet some love? All I want to do is spend some affection. It's what gives me my phalanx space direction. I don't want to steal your clothes. Oh no, I just want to suck your motherfucking toes. Going down south, put your toe in my mouth. You wake up and you see me. And let out a little shout But that just gets me off even more Makes me fall onto my knees and onto the floor Around your house I creep To find out where you sleep Cause all I want to know is Where do you keep your feet? Oh, oh, oh Where do you keep your feet? Where, where, where? That he decided to suck It was the only night My owner didn't sleep in his socks I woke up wet And I was like What the fuck Turns out I love being sucked Oh, around my house He crept To find out Where I slept I'm in here Inside my bed Come over here and get me wet oh, oh, oh. Come on and get me wet Wet, 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 wet Don't stop sucking my toes Ignore all those people that say that it's gross You know, don't know where I've been But all I want is for you to suck me clean oh, oh, oh. Come on and suck me clean oh, Wow, um, a, a very uh, uh, scintillating performance, one might say. Um, uh, uh, so, um, To, first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, one thing I, I, I have to say is, judging from your account, it seems like this was an awakening for the both of you. Oh, yeah, very much so, yeah. Uh, we both didn't realise we had this attraction and... It is a shame that he's going away for a while now that we've realised, but as soon as he's out, we're going to be together forever. That is a, 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 that is a very hard and fast promise. Um, are you currently corresponding with each other? Well, it is a bit hard. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest about that. But, you know, a nudge here, a nudge there, a little toe, you know, goes wondering. And it'll be all right until he's got the, a wall in between us. But maybe I can kick it a bit and he'll know that that's me. Can I ask, does everyone have a little face underneath their toenail? Yeah, I mean, not everyone will ever discover their little toenail face underneath their toenail. You've got to show your toe some love, some respect and some honesty. And that's what happened tonight. And uh, I'm so glad that that happened and I just... I never want to be back inside the toenail anymore. I want to stay out, you know? That must be it's very painful for the, um, for the rest of the body. I mean, 
the yeah. nerve endings, the exposure. Jane. Yeah. Yeah, Jane. Oh. Jane was very shocked. Obviously, she let out a little yelp. Hmm. But ultimately, I think she's taken my feelings into consideration, and hmm. she's been really supportive. Thank you so much, Jane. What do the other toes think about this? Yeah. You know, I think there's a little bit of jealousy among the ranks, um, as you'd re- as you'd expect. But maybe if we can all go out there together, and they seem they seem quite supportive. Maybe if we're going out there all together, we're finding we're finding people for each other. Do you know what I mean? It'd be yes. nice. Oh well, um, this has been an illuminating conversation. Just one quick question, Big Toe, just before you go. Mm-hmm. Do, do you think this burglar would have been caught? if he just sucked the toe or do you think that the sucking the toe and the loudly singing what he was doing played a part in it? That is a tricky thing. Um, Some cooks call it a lullaby. Mm -hmm. I was soundly asleep until I got sucked. Yeah. And it really shook me to my core. I don't know what Jane was up to. She's quite far away. The head end, you know? Yeah. Probably sleeping. Yeah. Excellent. Probably. This has been um, really illuminating, actually. I need to go have a conversation with my big toe, it seems. Thank you so much for joining us, big toe. Thank you very much, Chaz. Lovely to see you. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. And now uh, over to Luke with um, another Swingometer update. Uh uh Uh-huh. Yes. Hello. It's time for another update on the old swingometer. Not happening in the future. Ah! It's a oh, what? The balloons! <laughs> Wait, what is there? happening now? Jazz, the balloons! This is so in. unprofessional. Jazz, this is the most unprofessional you thing. Jazz, You've made me look ridiculous. You know what? No, that's it. I won't be made to look ridiculous. No, thank you. No, no Jazz! No, don't sorry. Do it. Sorry. No, thank you. What are you doing? No. I never meant to make you look silly, Chaz. I just meant to say inappropriate things that would ruin the vibe for everyone. Oh no. My oh, god, I hope that little balloon monster. Oh, not the balloon monster's back again! I'm now going to cut to Shari Monroy, who's speaking to Louis Theroux. Hello and good evening. This is Shari Monroy reporting for CNN. In tonight's segment of. I don't know, what's he up to? We have an exclusive interview with documentarian and journalist, Louis Thoreau. I found lockdown quite difficult, but then I realized that I could document the strangeness of my own surroundings. I quickly realized that the objects in my house were alive and wanted to know how they were dealing with lockdown. Seems like no one's following guidelines anymore. Can't be social distance in a hot tub, John. Fuck off, Mary. Feel like I lost my spark. It's hard getting private time, you know. It's... Yeah, I find it quite uh, difficult to. Uh, um, reporting live uh, for CNN. Uh, back to you guys. Now. I understand there's been a lot of concern about the budget that has been released recently. And here on Monster News, we don't shy away from the big topics. So we thought nothing better than to hear from the budget himself. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, for one night only, I would like you to come and say a very big hello to none other than the Chancellor of the Exchequer's Budget Boy. We could have been anything that we wanted to be. But we can still make a change. If we decided, I think we should try it. Don't you really think that we really ought to? Yeah, so that's enough of that. I think that that pretty much explains it. Um, Thank you all so much for coming to the show and watching us here at the Cardboard News Network. I hope that answers your questions about the budget and I hope we have answered your questions about yourself and the news. We'd like to say a big old thank you to the OSO Arts Centre, especially Johnny and Leo who've been doing all of our tech, and also to our producer, Georgia House, who's been behind the scenes, plugging in the cameras and pointing them at our faces. 
Thank, big thank you also to all of our guests. That was Eddie Hurst, Ella the Great, Adam Larter, Katie Pritchard, Cat Bond, LEBW, Michael Julings, the lovely boys, Chris Sav, and Shari Monroy. And now there's nothing left to do but to say the immortal words. Roll the credits! Yeah!